Hello friends, welcome back to strategic management. We have been trying to build up a case around strategically managing value chains which I have been calling as strategically managing things. Value chains, things may be called as value chains, even you can start from organizations. You can think in terms of looking at organizations with the industry perspective if you are in a major industry player or a large corporation which represents a larger portion of industry that is according to the share and participation in that industry, then definitely value chains and subsequently value webs where we would be reaching. After that or alongside that we are thinking in terms of managing strategy and these two parallel things we are trying to build up in terms of vision, mission, objectives and goals wherein we have been discussing strategic management process with you know how to define those kind of things and on the other side parallelly we have discussed about policy, plan and so many things. Lastly before this segment we were talking about how to look at ethics. Can we look at ethics with a strategic orientation, with a strategic perspective and thinking in terms of ethics as a strategy itself with a strategic approach which may lead us towards a long term goal, a long term vision definitely with reference to values, core values which we have discussed and cultural orientation. Now we are moving towards how and you know what kind of strategic steps we would be taking, how we have to take those steps and we are progressing towards that kind of a situation. Before that once we go towards you know choosing specific business and functional level strategic steps wherein we have touched upon those kind of things with a reference to uh, you know generic strategies in terms of growth, stability and turnaround with reference to cost and differentiation and I told you that we will be going for cost or differentiation uh, which we have talked about but cost and differentiation later on. So along with that once we are trying to build up we should think in terms of the environmental factors which affect our strategic approach, our strategic steps because environment is overpowering. Environment has so much to say in terms of its forces go, political forces in terms of environment they overwhelm the situation many times, technological situation overwhelms the decisions of corporations many times. But before I go towards environmental factors and try to present in front of you what authors and thinkers they have been talking about the role of environmental forces in our strategic decision making and strategic steps which we would be choosing. The most important element which we have to consider in terms of as far as strategic approach or strategic steps go is sustainability. Environmental sustainability is such a big I would not say issue but a concern at this moment which touches upon the lives of everyone regardless of the kind of business you are into, the kind of corporation you are into, the kind of industry you are into and so on. This should have come to us long back. If you will go into the studies and data you would find that 5 decades ago we were, we, we were practically of this opinion that earth can give us everything and we can keep on extracting everything from this earth. Rivers they have an immense capacity of taking everything whatever we dump in those rivers, sea has an immense capacity of absorbing almost everything whatever we put there, air has a capacity of filtering almost everything whatever we go for and sky has a capacity which is immense. But then we have realized you know sea is actually expressing its limitations in terms of uh, not being ab able to absorb many things, rivers they are you know a, a major concern we are losing fresh water and ozone layer has been a concern for long long time now and earth has sort of expressed its limitation that please do not extract more I have some limitations as of now. These have been immense resources but I think we did not you know sort of think of how what should be our extent basically. It is an ethical issue but it has to be seen with the perspective of sustainability. Now once we look at environmental sustainability, we must look at that 
how to go for sustainable business. These are two sides of the same coin. Business sustainability was an aspect which we always dealt with the perspective of how to keep going through our businesses for a long, long time that is retaining the customers and retaining the business and keeping our positions in terms of growth or stability which we have always focused upon and that was the motivation because of which we kept on building you know organizations developing industries developing factories and producing to a large extent we reached to the levels of efficiency wherein we uh, sort of started thinking in terms of you know that we can't be efficient anymore that is for example i, I told you we started producing motorbikes to the levels of 5 to 6 to 7 seconds per bike. We started producing cars to the levels of 22, 23, 25 or let us say 1 minute at, at max, one car in a minute sort of. You know the kind of production we have gone for, do we require that kind of a production? When we, when we started looking at it, then we started looking at another aspect of that if we do not require that kind of a production and we might not be able to. Uh, you know add more clientele or, or customers then we started going for two or more products per customer that was genuinely our concern and that was a marketing strategic approach which we started focusing upon and then once we realized that there is a saturation to that as well then we started going for something else in, in terms of you know replacing the products which the customers had and then dumping those products and producing more. Then we realized that we should be going for you know circular perspective of uh, you know reusing some parts of those products and putting back into the uh, production system. And then we started focusing upon entire circular economic uh, you know situation wherein you know recycling almost everything and we started working upon that. These were natural concerns to sustain our businesses. But in the meanwhile we knew that but we learned and we observed that somehow if we do not consider environment alongside and to the levels of you know uh, the prime most concern if we do not do that then neither we would be able to sustain our businesses in long term and sustainability definitely would push us towards a situation wherein we would not be or we would be short of options throughout. Still we have so many concerns which we will not be able to change. I will try to put up few examples in front of you. Automotive industries these are very apparent examples. You see uh, th there are two situations which I put in front of you and I, I uh, mentioned that briefly in uh, you know some of my earlier sessions and in other subjects which I have delivered earlier integrated marketing communication also product and brand management also innovation in marketing and marketing of innovation. Uh, you know strongly I propose those kind of things. I will take you to a particular kind of a scenario wherein uh, an eminent lawyer who is uh, a Raman Magsai Sai awardee Mr. Mehta. I uh, met him once a very influential thinker and he narrated a story that someone told him that a, uh, you know uh, a prominent river of our land. Ganga which we revered to be a holy river is on fire. He was amazed to learn about this and the story goes on he came to the place near Rishikesh in the foothill of Himalayas and he witnessed himself that uh, a chemical waste got stuck up somewhere at the bend of a river and got fire and practically the river was on fire. He was amazed to look at that. And he realized that if we have started dumping so much of chemical in the rivers, then somehow there has to be a measure which should curtail that. Otherwise, that you see, if, if chemical is getting stuck up on the surface of the rivers, that means it's not flowing, that means the river absorption capacity is diminishing. And that is alarming because rivers are the source of, and especially I would talk of Gangaji, that. Ganga is a river which is directly connected to almost 500 million people in this country. 500 million which is a large part of population. Ganga is responsible for irrigating the land which produces largest quantity of food for whole of this country. If we somehow do not care about the river itself then it would be a disaster. 
although credit must go to the government and the policies associated with Ganga, lot has been done. There are lot many people who got involved in cleaning Ganga and retaining the cleanliness of Ganga in due course of time. There are huge efforts, there is a ministry, they are working on that. There is whole lot of experts who have been working on that and proudly I can say that Indian Institute of Technology Roorkee has been participating in all such efforts, most of the such, eff uh, such efforts and all the IITs they are playing an important role in that. And apart from that, lot many people, scientists, social scientists and you know activists and so on. But the point is that when Mr. Mehta was demonstrating this kind of a thing that, that might not be so accurate a story but, but I, I apologize to Mr. Mehta if somehow it is a distorted version probably. Uh, but, but again the point is the, the crux of the event was that he was alarmed to learn that somehow this thing is happening. He went back to, he is a Supreme Court lawyer, he went back to Supreme Court and filed a public interest litigation. Story started and court admitted that case and very zealously, intelligently, you know, uh, with lot of integrity and honor, everyone started thinking in terms of the judiciary system of India, which is impeccable. It is wonderful. They started looking into this, this kind of a thing basically and people started wondering on that which are the kinds of industries which are polluting our rivers basically. So, segregation happened, categorization happened, lot of procedures they started taking place, ministries they came up, government became active, present government is doing a lot on that. So, everyone became active on then categorization and then to the extent of which industries should not work anymore in terms of in that form, especially some were asked to you know abandon their uh, production, especially near Ganga and so on. Lot many people were activated in terms of you know lot of awareness was being generated and so on because of the concern that if somehow we would not be able to retain the sanctity of the water, the freshness of the water, we would lose so many things starting from our food capacity. A major concern, if you will look into this story and to cut the long story short, then the story started and uh, you know so many litigations were filed and so many measures were taken, so many policies came into being, government policies came into being and businesses they augmented their policies accordingly. Now today we have strong laws and policies in favor of maintaining our rivers, not only Ganga but almost every river in this country and we feel happy that we are on the right trajectory of maintaining the water, the flow as well as the purity of the water. Why we are concerned with such kind of a thing basically? If you would realize that if a river is directly connected with 500 million people, agriculture and agriculture industry, other industries associated with you know farming, even textiles or some, some other industries, there are several kinds of value chains which are associated with one river. Not only just you know people require fresh water to drink and you know for, for almost everything along with irrigation, but so many industries are associated with river. We require water for almost everything we, we live with and you know starting from electricity generation to agriculture to food processing to uh, you know textiles and several several if you will draw on value chains and will try to associate you know what kind of industries are associated with one source of river, you would be amazed to see that you know larger part of our lives are associated and dependent upon this source of water. I would say this source of water. And if you will cumulatively look into all the sources of water, then you would realize that the magnitude is huge, it is very big. Here comes the association of sustainability, environment sustainability and along with environmental sustainability, the question of business sustainability. Now if we would have started looking in terms of business sustainability along with environmental sustainability beforehand, this situation might have been avoided. And that is the whole point of taking you know suitable strategic steps alongside the vision. You see, we have seen organizations saying that they want this world to be a better place. They have expressed that in their vision statements. So, if somehow organizations are associated with that large context of vision and then they are deriving their business vision out of that context and defining mission according to that, then there are several things which they have to consider and they should have been considered. Sooner or later, we decided to do that and that is why 
sustainability became a larger important element of you know all the procedures which we are following in our organizations including accounting procedures as of now and that is the point which i am going to raise as of this you know session and probably subsequent one but the point is that if we start you know conceiving the element of sustainability alongside the business probably we would be changing the complete business probably we would be changing the complete business environment which we would be talking about in terms of what kind of environmental forces we should be focusing upon for example we were worried about trees we started focusing upon less usage of paper we all know that for past 4 5 decades we have you know we have been diverting ourselves from the usage of paper and today happily almost whole of this world is relying on electronic displays rather than paper and paper usage has been sort of reduced to a larger extent also i i don't have specific data on that but definitely it has reduced to a larger larger extent even books are now being produced electronically and we are writing on electronic displays as of now for example you are studying electronically we have you know storage devices to store and and we have saved our trees to an extent the importance of trees the importance of water importance of all the natural resources is is to be understood now let me uh, take you to some you know industrial scenarios for example construction industry construction industry requires you know earth sources in terms of cement in terms of mud soil in terms of you know some other uh, aspects including bricks which come from land so these three four things apart from several other things which construction industry requires construction is a requisite industry we require construction for almost everything for infrastructure for homes for houses everyone wants a home a house everyone wants a dream home and that is what construction industry is relying upon usually we do not think in terms of if you see we did not have scarcity of land up till an extent today we are uh, finding that too that the space is limited so we have started you know going for uh, multi stories and those kind of things the countries which have been facing scarcity of land the island countries and so on smaller countries they have always been looking into smaller spaces to to be utilized more and so on but regardless of this aspect of you know scarcity of land and scarcity of space construction industry requires almost several kinds of uh, resources including water resource to a large extent basically and water not only for constructing but also for electricity which has to be provided to the infra infrastructure through hydro power and so on there are several aspects which you would realize and if you will analyze you know if you will draw a value chain or you will draw a list of what kinds of value chains or industries or products are uh, related to construction of one house you would realize that they are hundreds in number and most of them are dependent upon natural resources what should construction industry do it's an irreversible process everyone wants construction around them Th that is needed basically so should we stop it we can't stop that but then construction industry should have started thinking in terms of utilizing less of the natural resources or optimally using the natural resources and utilizing the acumen the intelligence in terms of design and architecture and you know waste material to come up with as far as uh, the the houses and the infrastructure goes which we have started doing now we have started using metal Uh, to an extent but metal is also dependent upon the extraction from earth and so on so we have tried to go for you know replacements in terms of now we have gone to an extent of landfills through plastics and we have started going for you know constructing walls through different kinds of waste material even waste bottles and so on and and you would realize you see i am not uh, just demonstrating environmental problems here but but it is related to our business orientation so if we would have designed a process wherein we would have started recycling the products and we would have uh, you know gone for analyzing that these are the materials which can be uh, reused the, uh, some types of composites can could have been developed in terms of you know using for construction industry and so on some some kinds of you know uh, 
uh, innovations would have been done which we have done to an extent now but but would have been done earlier and you know the, the kind of architectural designs and the lighting arrangements and the green buildings which we have started doing now and it's overwhelming nowadays all of the world is uh, focusing upon that there are con contests and competitions for green buildings and awards which are given to green buildings and so on if we would have started doing that much earlier that would have not only saved the environment to an extent the earth resources to an extent but it would have gone for a different kind of a business sustainability and uh, you know a strategic approach wherein the customer would have been you know more uh, associated with the kind of products environment friendly products which you would have gone for there is a lot of science associated with that uh, central building research institute which is uh, here in the IIT campus itself they have their own campus within our campus they keep on researching on these kind of things forever and they, they produce material which is more environment friendly and so on they produce houses and dismantleable houses and so on you see whole lot of science has come up whole lot of an industry change has come up and whole lot of different kinds of organizations they have evolved in due course of time which are now focusing upon such kind of sustainable businesses along with environmental sustainability look at tire industry for that matter look at packaging industry and look around yourself look at furniture industry look at utensils look at refrigerators electrical appliances and several other things which you have around you at this particular moment and you would realize that all of the industries all of the organizations which are associated with such kind of businesses they could have gone for such kind of measures if they would have thought of you know this this thing in terms of strategic approach in terms of technological advancements in terms of uh, you know funding the projects or or you know doing research and development themselves which would have changed their complete you know construction line or production line or, or they would have brought in alternative products and so on. This could have been done which now everyone is trying to do but again the point is this is uh, you know a recuperative kind of an approach whole of the world is going for renewable energy sources for electricity generation as well as automotives and so on and few days later or few months later or in couple of years you would realize that all the existing kinds of vehicles which are polluting this world would have changed their orientation towards EVs or solar powered vehicles or hydrogen powered vehicles and so on. But then there are uh, you know questions in those kind of technologies also. So, we are shifting from one to other and we, we would know that we would realize in due course of time what kind of issues are associated with those kind of businesses. So, having laid the ground of business sustainability along with environmental sustainability I wish to propose in front of you that ultimately at the end of the day business would live if we have resources for the business if customer does not have you know issues which are more pressing on customers life as compared to the the you know acquiring the products which we produce for example customers if they would be fighting climate change more and they would be spending a lot of money on their health and climate change they might not be looking towards purchasing automotives at all and that would affect adversely affect automotive industry and which many countries and cities they have been doing there are many cities in the world which now are automotive free cities people do not use automotives at all they are using bicycles or they are walking on foot so are we losing market somewhere and would it be reaching to our organization in due course of time despite of the fact that we are uh, switching on to ev businesses if at all it is coming to us and it is a matter of few few years or a decade or so then we should be strategically thinking in terms of you know turning around the complete business sphere probably we should be you know switching back to producing you know engine less vehicles or not even evs basically mechanical vehicles which have larger efficiency and those kind of things so this is an important element which i am presenting in front of you let's see what authors have to say about kellett thompson and strickland and gamble they have talked about what do we mean by sustainable business practices i am initiating this discussion would be carrying forward in the next session as well and we will realize that authors have been talking about this since decades 
earlier authors who, who have written books much earlier, you know, almost 100 years back or so, they have also been talking about this. Somehow, we could not consider that because we wanted this world to be a better developing place and we were not looking into environment with that kind of a perspective and strategically orienting ourselves with that kind of a concern. So, authors say that sustainable business practices are those that meet the need of the present without compromising the ability to meet the needs of the future. What we were thinking in terms of needs of the future five decades ago. So, let us see you know what authors have to say about as far as sustainable business practices go when they say what do we mean by sustainable business practices. Sustainable business practices are those that meet the needs of the present, the present time without compromising the ability to meet the needs of the future. Five decades ago were we thinking in terms of the future only in terms of next five decades? If we were then somehow we, we were not looking that far. If, if somehow you know we were not able to visualize that what kind of effects the product which we are producing would, would you know the kind of effects the products would produce for the environment and the concerns which product would produce for the environment in due course of time, we were somehow not thinking about the environmental forces which, which to an extent they are you know they, they keep on giving us, but after that they might express their limitation. If somehow we were not concerned about the kind of pollution we would be going for in due course of time, we were not looking that far in terms of the health hazards people would go for, the cost of uh, health which would be raising, we would be raising or we would be contributing in raising the cost of health and the productivity which we would be losing in terms of you know the number of people who would be not so well. Because if whole of this world is healthy, the kind of productivity this world would have is entirely different as compared to a large number of people doing not so well or not being that healthy. We always talk about food products which are not so healthy, we always talk about that and they have direct repercussion. But every industry which we are focusing upon you know and then I talked about in terms of construction and tyre, I think that there is a contribution of almost every industry in terms of the health hazards and which has a relationship with as far as the productivity and contribution of people which they could have made in terms of you know development of this world and they could not somehow because they kept on fighting with as far as their health goes. We started producing several kinds of you know uh, services generating several kinds of services and people say I am not an expert on this uh, you might find the sources that that is associated with you know development of cancer or, or you know kind of uh, uh, advancement of those kind of diseases in uh, terms of number of people so on and, and uh, you see and that has a huge cost and it affects the productivity of the people and the contribution of the people in this world adversely. So, you see that has a direct relationship with whatever we wish to do ultimately we want our customers to be healthy, happy so that they can devote their resources for purchasing our products, it is a mutual relationship. Then the authors further add that many companies incorporate a consideration of environmental sustainability into their strategy making activities. I would go to the extent of adding on to this, authors have also said that, that whole of the process should be seen with that kind of a perspective, whole of the value chain, whole of uh, you know uh, all, all the strategic processes which we would be following, whole of the strategy itself you know it is a long term path should be seen, this long term path should be seen with the perspective of environmental sustainability. Then authors add that environmental sustainability strategies entail deliberate and concerted actions to operate businesses in a manner that protects natural resources. How would you do that if you are into a business which actually depends upon extraction of natural resources? Then the authors say that that protects natural resources and ecological support systems guards against outcomes that will ultimately endanger the planet and is therefore sustainable for centuries. Depleting forests, depleting rivers, we have been using that, we know that, but then what should we be doing that? We should be incorporating this concern through the strategic path which many organizations they have started doing and they should focus upon that more. I will be coming back to an extension of this argument and would be suggesting to you that if we do that, that would be a greater strategic approach that would strengthen our strategic path 
to reach to the vision which we have for this world. And ultimately you would realize if you would have started enumerating visions in comparison to each other, in most of the cases you would realize that all the organizations they think about prosperity and opulence of this world. These are the two key words which we are pursuing all through. I will be catching up back with you in my next segment, extending this argument and presenting the whole story in front of you. Till then, goodbye.